Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be the 10th video in the series where I'm building this guy right here. And I'm calling it the, uh, the E-War Stingray. I think it looks really cool. It's an offset uh, shaped guitar. I'm using a uh, tunematic type bridge. We've got a string through deal going down here. We've got uh, two humbucker pickups, set neck. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm, I'm really digging the whole thing. And if you've been watching along, you know the last several videos we've done, we've been working on the neck. We did, uh, we did the neck blank with the tapered stripes in the back. We did the scarf joint. We did another video on making this really cool looking fretboard. And the last video, we did, uh, we did all the milling on this neck. So we've got our truss rod uh, cut in. We cut our tuners. We did our uh, outside profile shape. We cut in our little truss rod access, a little truss rod access uh, cover here. And this thing is set to go. The next step we need to get to on this now is get this fretboard glued in that we made in the last video or two videos ago and i think once we get that in we'll go ahead and press the frets in it too before we cut the uh cut out the back and carve this neck because uh, i like this thing being able to sit on my fret press really nice on this solid back for pressing in the fret so that's what i think this video is going to go ahead and be about so uh why don't i go ahead and turn the camera down and i will show you uh where we're at so far with this thing and we're going to get going on uh, gluing on this fretboard. Okay, so when getting ready to uh, glue on the fretboard, I did a couple things off camera that uh, I've done a bunch of times. Like, for instance, one of the things I did was when you cut a truss rod in with either a router or a CNC machine, there's some finish up work you need to do with chisels. You've got to square up the rounded corners, uh, just go through and make sure the depth is good. You're basically doing the final fitment of the truss rod, which I did. And also drilled my hole through from my uh, truss rod access into the truss rod and I made sure that that was good and I've got that to where my uh, my Allen keel fit in there. Also checked the truss rod, I put it in my vise and I bowed it both ways to make sure it works. Manufacturers suggest you do that before you go ahead and build a guitar with that in it and something's wrong with it. And I also, uh, <clears throat> on my fretboard, if you remember, the first thing we did on this fretboard was we surfaced the back side of this thing with that one inch uh, surfacing cutter on the CNC machine. And though it was perfectly flat and, and straight and smooth, I wanted to go ahead and take some uh, sandpaper and sand it up and get out any milling marks. So I had this uh, 120 sandpaper and 220 on this uh, sanding block here. And so I, I sanded that off just to get off the tooling marks. And I also sanded my headstock plate here um, before I get before I get all this built up on the top and I can't just sand past it, I went ahead and took some 220 and 320 grit sandpaper uh, on a sanding block, this guy right here, and uh, um, and I sanded this too up to 320. And I'll be sanding it more, but that way I just got out the tooling marks because remember I surfaced this off too on my CNC machine. So and that'll leave very very light uh, uh, tooling marks. So we got that off, but. So now we're ready to go ahead and glue on the fretboard. And uh, so what I've done, if you remember when we were milling this neck, I cut a slot up here for my, for my nut at uh, 0.180, 180 thousandths of an inch. And so I took my nut material here and I went ahead and I shaped it down to that same thickness. And I'm going to have this nut slipped into this slot right here and it fits beautifully. Uh, and that's where I'm going to, when I position my uh, fretboard, I want to make sure I'm pressed tight and firmly up against that. And if you look, I've got an excellent fit there between the nut and the fretboard and the nut and the headstock plate here too. I've got, got a great fit and I just want to make sure that when this thing is glued in, uh, when the fretboard is glued in and when I come back later to glue on the nut, that that nut is going to fit in there perfectly and look just like that. So I'm going to have that nut in place while I'm gluing this up. And that should help uh, help that happen in the end. So, uh, and what I want to do, uh, it, you've probably seen this before, but I love using this stuff here as my little indexing pins. Uh, this glue, you put glue on this, these things, parts like this, and they'll slide all over the place. And it'll be hard as heck to keep in, in uh, keep where you want it uh, for the glue up of the thing. So I'm going to drill in these. Uh, this is a three thirty seconds of an inch thick plastic dowel. And what it is, it's, uh, I buy it from Stu Mac, it's side dot marking material. Okay, it's just a very inexpensive little plastic. And it happens to be exactly 3 seconds of an inch, which is what this drill bit is here. And the cool thing about this stuff is a fret, which is this, the, my standard fret wire, the top of that fret actually covers that 
is bigger than that uh, than the diameter of that uh, that um, plastic rod right here. So the cool thing about that is I can get this um, fretboard into its location. Want clamp it here, just dry clamp it, and take this drill bit and run it right down into that fret uh, slot right here, and then do the same thing down at the other end. Go through this fret slot right there put my indexing pins in and that'll keep it in line for when I'm gluing it up and then when it's all said and done and I go to press these frets in that fret will cover whatever is exposed on that uh, plastic rod right there so I think that's pretty cool so anyway so I think that's what we're gonna do the first thing I'm gonna do is get a couple line this up good get a couple clamps on here get my indexing pins lined up and get her glued on All right, so I think we're looking good here. Um, we've got this uh, fretboard glued on there and it's all set to go. And the next thing we wanna start doing on this thing is the frets, because I like to be able to press the frets into this thing uh, with the bottom of this neck being nice and flat and straight, because it'll just hold it more stable on top of my fret press. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So, but the couple of tools I've got here, the first, the first tool I've got that I like to use for this, this is my uh, fret radiusing, my fret wire radiusing deal here which you crank it along, you just put the fret wire in there and put the proper radius on it for whatever, uh, whatever your radius of your fretboard is. In this case, it's gonna be a 12 inch radius. Um, I'm using, I use Stumax uh, 152 fret wire. They call it their medium higher. But this time I'm trying their gold fret wire, which is, I'm sure it's brass. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna give that a shot. Since I got gold colored hardware, I got the brass in inlays in the uh, neck. I thought uh, brass uh, or gold fret wire would be cool too. So I'm gonna use that. So I've got my little uh, thing here where I keep each of the pieces of the fret wire as I get them cut, keep things organized for me. I'm gonna use my, uh, got my file here for once the frets are installed. I could file down the edges it, uh, it puts a nice bevel on the edges. And I've got my fret tang nipper, which you'll see how this works. This is gonna nip the little fret tang from under the end of the fret so I could cut back the fret uh, tang so I could fill in the ends of this uh, fretboard and make it look like blind uh, blind fret slots which is cool and I've got my regular old nippers here and then I've got my uh, I've got my fret press right over here too so uh, those are the tools we're going to be using so uh, let's uh, let's get radius and some fret wire and get cutting away and, and get this thing fretted up
Okay, so we got all of our fret wire cut and the tangs cut off them. And we're basically set to go. There's two things I want to do to these uh, fret slots before we move on though. One of them is I'm going to take this triangular file right here and I'm going to go over each fret slot a few times, not a whole lot. The idea what I'm trying to do is I want to open up just about like that. I'm going to open up the top of the fret slot right there which is going to help me a little bit. Let's see, that's number 13. That is going to help me get my fret started in there, okay? So that's just sitting down in the fret slot a little bit like that. That's going to help me get it started in there. And when I press it, it'll grip in really well. And they also tell me that someday when they go to redo these frets, it's much easier for the luthier to remove the frets if the slot has been opened up a little bit on top. So it serves two purposes. One's going to help me now, and it's going to help somebody else in the future. So that's one thing I'm going to do. And the other thing I'm going to do is this tiny little, this is a, a fret clean out saw. Okay, it's just a tiny little Japanese saw. And it's got the, uh, it's got the right kind of teeth. And I could get it, I'm going to run it into each fret slot, like so. Make sure there's nothing that got in there. Make sure no glue's in there. There's no built up sawdust in there. It's going to get in the way. This is like the one last little cleaning of these slots I'm going to do before we press in these frets. So it's just one last little precaution. So anyway, so we're going to do that and then we're going to get going over in that fret press and start pressing these uh, frets in. Okay, so we are looking good now. Everything is uh, set to go. We've got our grooves done, got everything cleaned out. I think before I do any further, now I'm going to glue these frets in with some CA glue. And just as a one little precaution, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple coats of boiled linseed oil just with, the, just with this rag here on the surface of the thing. I think it may give me a couple extra seconds of cleanup time before uh, before that CA glue does any staining, which is just going to help me be an easier time cleaning up in between these frets when the guitar is all done. So anyway, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to throw on a little coat of this boiled linseed oil, let it dry for probably 15, 20 minutes, maybe hit it with another coat. And then uh, I'll probably wait till the morning before I start doing any, uh, doing any fret work on the thing. But I'm just doing a real light coat because I don't want to get down inside the fret slots. So this is just going to be a super, super light coat, and I think it's going to look pretty good. Okay, so now all, that all the frets are in, the next step in the process is we want to trim these edges back. I've already clipped them with my clippers, but we need to trim them back and put the proper bevel angle on, on the ends of the frets, uh, which I've already done, but since my microphone wasn't plugged in, I'm going to redo it here for you. So uh, what I do is I'm just going to clamp this guy right here in my, 
a little uh, leg vise, okay? And I've got this file, which is a, a tool I bought from Stu Mac. It's just basically a, a metal file that's clamped into this piece, this block of uh, plastic, and it's at the proper angle for our fret ends. So I basically just hold it on here like so. I, the, I run the flat part of the uh, plastic block on top of the ends of the frets, and that file is at the right angle to give me a nice little bevel. And I keep going until I can tell I'm touching wood, which like I said, I'd already done, and it results in a nice, just a nice bevel. Let me see if I can get some of that. Just a really nice bevel, and which is the correct bevel, so when we go at the end of the, the build, we're gonna take the files, we're gonna dress them, we're gonna crown them, level them, dress them, round the ends, and all that stuff. And But this will have it at the proper bevel that will allow us to continue working on the guitar until we're ready to dress out these frets. So, Okay, now there's one last thing I wanna do before we call this video finished, and that is I wanna come in here and I wanna fill my uh, the fret slot ends here uh, where they didn't, uh, remember those first five frets, if you remember when I did the fretboard, I was able to do the blind cutting on the CNC machine and I wound up doing the rest of them on my, uh, on my saw blade. So I've got a, a fret slot to cover up on each end. Of course, I've got two different colors. I've got the light part of this uh, zero coat and I got the dark part up here. So I managed to save a little bit of that sawdust from both the dark one and some from the light one too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work a little bit of the sawdust into each of the holes and I'm gonna drip a little bit of this thin CA glue in there and that ought to harden up really nice. And it'll also add the glue in the frets even though I've already glued them in with the, the medium CA glue before. So anyway, so let's go ahead and give this a try here. Well, guys, I guess that's about it for this one. I think we got it looking pretty good. I'm really uh, digging that gold fret wire. Incidentally, I went ahead and looked it up. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier in this video, brass. I wasn't really sure it looks like brass to me, but it's actually, I looked it up on Stu Mac's website, and it's a C425 copper alloy that they say is harder, harder than nickel and uh, is more corrosion resistant also. So we'll see. Um, Anyway, I think they look great, and I think it's a good combination with the color woods I have going in here. I'm really liking the way everything's coming out. Uh, I'm loving the whole thing, and I hope you all are too. Anyway, if you all come back next week, we're going to be carving on this neck, and uh, now to be the last thing we do, and we'll jump back on the body after that, and we'll do a little more CNC work. So uh, anyway, hope in the meantime, you all have a wonderful week, and God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.